Alright guys, my name is Christian Kahlberg from Demonic Games. Uh, I just finished this tutorial thingy and what we're gonna be doing is create one of these paintings that are animated and I'm gonna be... Uh, well, I don't know how to do this stuff, so enjoy. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to this little tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make those uh, animated uh, paintings. Uh, this is going to be a three step process uh, where we're first going to be doing stuff in Photoshop and then we're going to do stuff in Adobe After Effects and finally uh, render everything in Adobe Premiere. Um, so everything uh, you need uh, is, uh, oh, you're going to need Adobe uh, the Adobe Suite. So what I've done here is I've uh, loaded the the artwork which we're gonna use, and my idea is that we will uh, we will separate the the ground and uh, the angel here, uh, and also animate the hand so that uh, uh, the angel will be pointing towards the sky, and also the horizon will move uh, uh, shift slightly uh, slightly upwards. Uh, so what we do first is that we're gonna duplicate the the background and create a mask and start to to mask the the foreground. So duplicate by pressing Control J, and then we can create the mask like so, and change the color. And when we draw with the mask, stuff will disappear. We have to hide the background. I usually think it's easier to to have. Uh, like a green screen or something behind like this. Um, so this is green. So as we're gonna be painting onto this, the green will show. So we simply want to uh, zoom in here. And uh, keep in mind, I am no no way a professional I just learned to do this this way and there's probably a lot of shortcuts and stuff which I'm not aware of I'm using some special brushes I uh, purchased from uh, I think they're called Groot brush maybe yeah Groot brush uh, and I have a Wacom board so it's uh, it's sensing when I'm pressing uh, hard and uh, uh, and and soft so basically we basically what we're doing here is we're gonna just find all the edges. Let's see how we're going to do this. Is that a part of the foreground? Let's say it is. I'm going to work closer on that soon. And uh, you want to be quite, uh, what do you say, thorough when you do this because you don't want to accidentally clip the wings or something. Uh, so let's go down in size, zoom in, and start working on these details. Because what we want to do is we want to have uh, the foreground and the background uh, separated in different layers. And I'm going to be showing you how to uh, reconstruct the background without the angel. So I'm just going to fast forward through this part because it's going to be trivial. I'm just drawing, following the lines, and you should do the same. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do it with the, with a regular mouse instead of using a Wacom. But I, I think it's easier to put the Wacom because I can just press really faint and come in here and press harder to get it more uh, thick. All right, fast forward. Alright, so I accidentally took away too much on this, but because we're using a mask, you can see that uh, if I press hold the Alt key and press this, uh, we can see the mask I'm drawing. Uh, and and uh, this means that I can disable the mask and, and all my changes will uh, disappear if I enable the mask. Uh, so basically all the, the information is intact, uh, so nothing is gone. So for instance, now I accidentally took too much of his arm. Uh, so I'm pressing the X key to to switch the color. 
So now I'm uh, I'm removing the mask, you see? I'm painting with white because the mask is black and white like this. So actually I'm, I'm painting onto like this to remove parts of the mask. Look at this. Uh, also remember to select the mask when you're working with the mask. Uh, I'll switch to black color again. So if, if I do this, I was like, whoops, I can just switch the color and, and uh, take back whatever I messed up. And now switch back to black. I press the X key to, to switch between the foreground and background color. Uh, see like that. Uh, and we'll continue. Fast forward again. All right, so, uh, all right, so we now have masked uh, this guy. His finger got screwed up. Let's fix that. All right, so the angel is uh, is masked. Uh, and we had the green backgrounds. When I remove it, you can see that it's actually transparent. I just had the green background there for, for to easier see what's going on. So what we want to do is we want to um, essentially we want to be able to move the angel like this. But as you can see, the the background is still there. So we have to remove the background somehow. And uh, this is where Photoshop comes in really handy. Uh, so let's again copy the the background. So Control J to duplicate, or just do that. Uh, like so. Uh, we can press the control key to select the mask. So hold the control key and click on the mask and it will select uh, whatever we, we drew before. Uh, and I can uh, now uh, press control shift I to invert the selection. I can, I can hide uh, this layer which, with the mask and now we will only be working with, uh, with this layer which we will mm, remove the, the angel from. Uh, <coughs> So what we simply what we can do is we can use the fill tool, uh, the content aware fill, and it's gonna check the surrounding areas of the of the image, and do some Photoshop magic. So uh, we'll see how this ends up. That's horrible. <laughs> I maybe inverted the the I. Let's invert that thing again. There we go. Uh, I inverted the the selection, and now we have the the angel selected instead of the background. Mm. So what it tried to do there was it tried to to fill the background with the angel. When we want to do the opposite, we want to fill the angel with the background. Well, actually, it's gonna fill the. Uh, these rocks as well. We'll see how it ends up. That's much better. So you may look like crap right now, uh, but let's uh, let's be satisfied with that result. And it's now created a new layer for us. Uh, what I like to do is I like to merge them. So I'll merge these two layers. Uh, it's Control E, merge layers. Uh, and now we can use the the healing patch tool to just start to remove these rough edges and try to, to fix the horizon as well. This one should be completely white. And we're gonna copy some of the, the clouds soon. Everything's turning a bit grayish. We're gonna fix that soon as well. So let's use the clone tool instead. So this will clone an area. We hold the Alt key and press, and it's gonna copy. Let's undo that. It's too big. It's gonna copy. Let's see if we can see it. No, we can't. If I press the Alt key there and and then go here, it's gonna paint. You see, it's copying the same thing over there. Uh, but we want this to be white. 
we'll have to fix the, the, the grayish part so it becomes more white with uh, some bright tool, brightening tools. What am I doing? Uh, oh yeah, the healing brush doesn't work with the old key, I was just using the stamp tool. See, I'm not a professional, I just know to do some stuff. Alright, so we want to copy this horizon. Uh, let's go back to the stamp tool, press the Alt key, and click, and now move over here to copy and paint in this horizon. And we're going to get some, some uh, like, you see it's it's cloned the, the, the same area twice, it looks a bit funny. And the foreground, we don't have to worry about too much, I think, because we're going to have the the rocks will move upwards, so we won't see whatever's behind there. So this is going to move like this. You see now it's much, much better with the background. Uh, it's going to look really good. So it's going to move like this. Uh, and I think we should separate the horizon from the water as well. Uh, so let's try and do that. So we'll uh, yet again we duplicate this background we created. I'm gonna move this green layer so we can get some see what's going on. Create a mask. And let's do this this time. So I'll just do a rectangle, fill it because now the mask looks like this. And let's continue to draw the horizon on the on the mask. Hopefully this will end up good. I'm not sure. I actually haven't practiced this before. But this is the method I used for all the other paintings I had uh, for Guisha. Guisha is on Kickstarter right now, by the way. This is why I'm doing this, to promote my game, come on. Uh, it's doing really good, it's like on 93% and has about 11 days left or something. So it looks like it's gonna fun, it's gonna be real fun because it's my first game I've designed, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, all right, so we have the mask now, let's see how it looks when we move it. Uh, so we want to, maybe this one's going to, I'm just trying to f visualize how this is going to look. So we want this one to move up. Maybe the horizon shouldn't move. All right, much. No, it looks weird if the horizon moves. Screw that, ignore. This is some trial and error from my part to see as well. So maybe we shouldn't do that much more with this. It's just gonna be the angel moving upwards. And then we want the angel to, to move his hand and point towards the sky. Uh, actually, we can animate the sky. Uh, let's see what we have here. So I'll invert the 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 mask, so now the sky is moving instead. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can maybe zoom it or something. I will see. We'll do we'll do something cool with it. Uh, all right. So we have our parts. This is the 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 angel. So let's uh, save that. Uh, I'll like to save it as a PNG. Call them parts. Angel foreground. And then we have the sky. And then we have the background with the horizon. Does that make sense? This one goes there. I want only the part of the... I actually want it inverted again. I only want this part. <laughs> I'm thinking I might want to zoom the sky so it, something happens with the background. Uh, so let's just save this as well. I'll and those are the pieces we need. So, time to switch over to Adobe After Effects. All right, so I just launched Adobe After Effects and I'm gonna press new project. And we want to find our artwork stuff and draw these pieces into uh, whatever this area is called. 
this is uh, for some reason I always have the render queue open you don't need that yet so we want to go to this which is the name of the project so we'll save that in case something goes wrong let's call this angel angel that's fine all right so what we want to do here is we want to have our uh, let's have the background in case we need it uh, I'm using the alt key and uh, the scroll thing on the mouse to I work with IT I should know what the scroll thing is called uh, <laughs> uh, all right so we have the background uh, and we're gonna draw in the rest of the stuff as well so these are layers so we want the background to be in the back uh, the angel foreground to be in the front like that and we have the sky and then we have the horizon uh, right now this movie clip is 30 seconds long that's way too long let's make it shorter by dragging these ones maybe six seconds will do there we go I th oh yeah these are super long as well I'm holding shift and uh, selecting multiple stuff this is standard computer thingeries why is this still over here it's not supposed to go oh it was because those were all the way to the right before all right so I'm right now we have a six second clip and uh, what we want to do is we want to animate the, mm, the angel and maybe zoom in on the sky so let's start with the back the background is uh, I'll put a lock on it so it doesn't move let's just move the, f the angel downwards or actually we'll be moving it upwards like that in this uh, animation and then we're gonna be cropping a lot uh, in the video because this is not uh, the right aspect ratio for any video uh, so it's gonna look good I promise you uh, let's do some undo 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 and we want to move stuff transform position this is a uh, now we're animating so this is a keyframe so basically a keyframe is uh, uh, it has the information about the position and if I add another keyframe uh, for instance over here I'll press this one now it's going to to do a transition from from over here to over there so, uh, so whatever is changing so in this case I'm going to I'll, I'll hold the shift key so it only moves up and down so I'm going to be moving it slightly upwards like that uh, so now it's going to animate that movement all right so what else do we want to do we want to, want to maybe zoom the background so the background horizon let's see if this is this one no that's i wonder if this is this makes maybe se makes sense if it's we let's try to zoom it slightly i don't know if this is going to look weird or not you should have some like reference images or something I don't um, just doing this by feel so we're going to be scaling it that's that one keyframe and we'll add another keyframe and let's just slightly make it bigger like so Don't worry about this part. It's gonna look weird now. But we're going to be cropping it that out by by having the 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 what do you call it? The video frame is going to be ending over here. Uh, is this okay? Maybe we should move the background downwards. So we're gonna be moving the position and the background sky well so we're moving two things at once now hold the con control key to select multiple things uh, we have the keyframes and I want them to move downwards so it's going to feel like we're looking down or something I don't know we'll see we're going to move it 
slightly downwards like that. I think that might look good. All right, so let's get to the fun stuff. Uh, let's lock all the uh, all the layers except for the for the angel, and we want the angel to be pointing uh, upwards to the sky. So how do we do this? And we do this with something called is it mesh warp? I don't know what it's called. We'll see. Uh, I'm zooming in. And I'm taking this tool, which is called Puppet Position Pin Tool. Uh, and what I, want, I, knew, I, I usually use the, the advanced one, uh, because I think that one works better. So I'll just click the hand. And maybe I'll click over there as well, and over there. Uh, these are points which will be mo uh, modifying uh, our character. Uh, we want to have some at... Uh, like stuff that shouldn't be moving. Uh, so maybe this one shouldn't be affected, this one shouldn't be affected, and all of the whole body. I think there's actually a special, maybe starch is that stuff doesn't move. We'll see. Uh, all right. <coughs> so this one is creating now, it's called, what is it called? Mesh, puppet engine. Uh, it now has a deformed pin thing. So we're going to take the advanced pin tool and click the, the finger. Uh, see they're moving with the picture, that's good. Uh, it's already created keyframes for the, for the position, scale and rotation. So we want it to start with this hand lower. See how easy this is? Okay, see what happens there? So maybe these starch things aren't the right thing. I'll select them and delete them and just use the advanced pin tool and try to pin this down. I don't want his body to be moving around when I move his hand. All right, so let's try that again. Let's move this one down, this one as well. I don't want the whole body to, there we go. And we can rotate this as well. This is gonna look weird. You just have to look how, uh, have a feel for how it looks. So that's okay. And I want maybe over there. Same thing in, as in Photoshop. Hold down space to to pan. And we want him to be pointing upwards to sky. So now, remember these are keyframes. So when I move this now, it's gonna make an automatic keyframe moving to this position. And that's it. Does that look funky? Doesn't feel like he's like pointing. Yeah, I think the problem is because there's a cloth and it uh, it's he's on a cliff side. Stuff should be moving. So let's add some uh, some movement to the cloth. Angel foreground. So this cloth, let's add some more details to it. Let's add some stuff there and there. So let's make it like this and move it. That's crazy. Maybe, maybe it looks like wind, I'm not sure. 
or maybe his whole body is just flapping around. I'm not. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to look. Something is happening. I mean, it looks like maybe this one should move as well. Oh, not the arm though. Damn it! Everything's moving now. It's gonna look crazy. His arm is messed up. What is this? It's not looking good. It should be like that. It doesn't feel like he's pointing. Maybe it should start further down like this. And maybe move this down, this down, this down. Rotate this a bit maybe. Oh, we need to rotate it back. That's why it's so strange. That's going to be good. Mm. Cloth is moving a bit. Let's go back to the cloth. Move that. Oh, you're just staring at what I'm doing now, but you see, it's you can do this all day and add how much detail as you want. Uh, I mean, you could. There are some uh, some of these which are amazing, and I can only imagine how much time people put into animating all of these. You can you can go. <sighs> we could go and animate these hairs. Uh, and everything moved. Undo Control Z. Uh, Could be cool actually, just to have some movement on the wing, not too much. So all these discrete uh, things makes makes the image come alive. So we just move around this a bit. Feels like I want to move the tip as well. Slightly, maybe move it like that. And let's make some uh, animations on these parts as well. This part, this part, this part. the hell happened there? It looks crazy. That didn't make sense. What happened there? 
So this this keyframe. Now we can look closer at the keyframes. So from here to there, it's going to do a strange, huge jump. So I'll select this keyframe and move it all the way over there. This will make the animation not so jumpy. Actually, that's the wrong thing. So I want to select this one. Where are you? This pin. Pin number 23. Doing something crazy there. So these three needs to be moved slightly. See? Much better. All right, there's a lot of dots on this thing now. Um, let's just add one more, or a couple of ones, to make this part a bit more alive as well. I want to move this one like this. Just to have him feel like he's actually stretching. I think maybe it's not, not, not uh, being, it needs to be more exaggerated. Where's the finger thing? I'm looking for, for this, whatever it's called. Puppet pin number something. I created it in the beginning, so maybe puppet one. There we go. Uh, I want to see where it ends. It ends over there. The position. Let's move it more over there. And I wanted him even more upwards. actually start far more down like that it began really good with the cloth but there kind of nothing happens it's going to move up a bit All right, so let's do that. So uh, now when we're finished with this, I'm going to export it uh, to render queue. I'm going to the render queue over here. Lossless is fine. Uh, where is it going? Let's put it on my desktop. Angel animation. And render, and then fast forward, because this, uh, oh, it doesn't take too long, actually. We can actually see it doing it live here. And what we could do, we could add some, uh, some movement to the clouds as well, which would be cool. Wonder how we can do that uh, in a good way in, maybe like add a, some kind of noise or something to the clouds. Oh, screw that. Let's uh, let's uh, let's jump to uh, to Premiere. All right. So I just open up uh, Premiere. So let's do a new project. Angel something. So I didn't change any of the default values. I just. Uh, I just ran with the default ones. Uh, see what's happening now. There we go. Uh, let's get our video. This one. I'll put it in. Uh, I'll drag it into the import media, and then drag it to 
the timeline. And what I want to do here is I simply want to convert it to, to something that isn't 500 megs. Uh, so I'll just export it as an H.264 uh, and uh, we can just use high, oh we shouldn't actually, we have to match the source because the size is, uh, if we change the, the ratio to something else like Facebook, uh, we're gonna get a lot of cropping and stuff, we don't want that. So let's do match source, high bitrate, angel animation, let's put it on the desktop with, together with the rest of the stuff. Uh, and export it. And as you see, this image is quite small. It's 918 times 1,122 pixels. Uh, obviously, if you work with a, a full HD video, uh, this is not going to be uh, the, the quality of this image, it needs to be uh, bigger. Um, so let's create not a new project, but we can create a new sequence, which is maybe 720p. Uh, I don't know what all of these means. Let's just find some thing. 25 frames per second, that sounds good. So this one's going to be a bit, uh, uh, what do you say, um, fuzzy, blurry, because it's not wide enough for, for 720p. And it says like this, this clip doesn't match the sequence settings because we created a sequence with this uh, 720p. And it asks us if we want to change the sequence to match the clip settings. So if we do that, it's going to create one of those uh, postcard size, uh, the same size which this clip is. And, and we don't want to do that. We want to keep this one because we want to zoom in on this uh, this video. Let's. This should be six seconds, right? Yeah, about six seconds. Um, as you see, it's not enough high quality, uh, it's, it's too small, but we're going to use it anyway. I'll double click, clip, uh, double click uh, the video and I'll, uh, I'll scale it, make it bigger like that. Uh, it says fit there. So this is our, this is our, uh, our, uh, what do you call it? Our frame. So when we do it now, it's, uh, it's doing that, but we want to want to move this slightly down and down. So that's better. Uh, but as we do this, we also maybe want to let's move it down a bit more. And maybe we want to move the the whole uh, the whole image. We want it to move upwards so that we can see the foreground. Uh, so we're gonna yet again use some keyframes and stuff. So we press the position, uh, this little uh, clock, and it gave us a keyframe. Let's move it to the end. Add another keyframe, and now there there will be an animation from this value to this. I'm holding Shift, so it snaps to the the keyframe. Uh, so let's move it. Uh, how do we want it? That's not what we want, right? That's strange. We want it the other way around. We want it to start low and then end high. So there we have it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's something. It's not perfect. Uh, but it's something. So let's export it. Export media. I'll wait for the thing. 
where's my hello file export media did not open my control M strange I don't know why that took so long artwork final animation and export it use maximum render I don't know what the hell much different that makes should be fairly quick because it's just one video clip and that was not the final one of course this is our final one Yeah, it's a bit janky, but you get the, the general idea of how to do this. Um, perhaps, uh, when I, what do I do when I do this? Uh, when I look at this, what I would do differently is that I would, uh, I would do the whole angel separately and have him uh, go down a bit. Because now he's standing all on the top of the... Uh, what do you call it? On top of the cliff, I would do it like this. I would take him. See this word, something like that. What the hell did I do now? I copied him. Let's just uh, duplicate this. And let's. I would do this. As he's moving upwards. Oh, which also means I have to remove him. So he should be on the layer underneath. So I would do this with him. I think that would be look better when he comes up, that he goes uh, behind, behind the cliff. Sli slightly. And uh, I don't know what this, you see the cloth is making all of these crazy stuff, but you get the idea how it should work. This looked okay, and I stopped doing it halfway through, but that's how I do, do these animations uh, and I hope this helped you to get a better understanding of how that stuff works. With that said, go check out my Kickstarter. Uh, it's kickstarter.demonicgames.com uh, It's on like 92% or something with 11 days to go. Uh, dark Euro game where you contact, conjure and worship demons. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, have a good one. Bye.